Mary Oliver is one of my favorite poets. She also happens to be a cancer survivor. She uh, survived lung cancer and then she died just a couple of years ago of lymphoma. When she was first diagnosed with lung cancer, this is a poem she wrote about her cancer diagnosis. And um, it's really about her journey and it's written in four parts. Uh, each part represents a different philosophical perspective of facing cancer. She calls her poem, The Fourth Sign of the Zodiac. Part one. Why should I have been surprised? Hunters walk the forest without a sound. The hunter strapped to his rifle, the fox on his feet of silk, the serpent on his empire of muscles, all move in a stillness, hungry, careful, intent, just as the cancer entered the forest of my body without a sound. Part two. The question is, what will it be like after the last day? Will I float into the sky or will I fray within the earth or a river remembering nothing? How desperate I would be if I couldn't remember the sun rising, if I couldn't remember trees, rivers, if I couldn't even remember beloved, your beloved name. Part three. I know you never intended to be in this world, but you're in it all the same. So why not get started immediately? I mean, belonging to it. There's so much to admire, to weep over, to write music or poems about. Bless the feet that take you to and fro. Bless the eyes and the listening ears. Bless the tongue, the marvel of taste. Bless touching. You could live a hundred years. It's happened or not. I'm speaking from the fortunate platform of many years, none of which I think I ever wasted. Do you need a prod? Do you need a little darkness to get you going? Let me be urgent as a knife then and remind you of Keats, so single of purpose and thinking for a while he had a lifetime. Part four. Late yesterday afternoon in the heat, all the fragile blue flowers in bloom in the shrubs in the yard next door had tumbled from the shrubs and lay wrinkled and fading in the grass. But this morning, the shrubs were full of the blue flowers again. There wasn't a single one on the grass. How, I wondered, did they roll back up to the branches, that fiercely wanting, as we all do, just a little more of life?